Hey, Church 180, how you doing? I uh, hope everybody's doing fine here. Uh, I am, and uh, it's just a joy, it's a thrill to be back again to talk to you. And and uh, today we're going to have a talk from a, uh, from the book of James. I know you guys have been in the book of James some, and we're going to talk from there, and we, we're going to talk about some scripture that some people find it, uh, they don't quite get what, what is James saying here, what's he actually saying. So I don't know that by the time I finish, you're going to have figured that out, but I'm going to make a good effort. To, 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 to pass on to you what I've learned from my, my studies as it applies to the book of James and what James talks about. Let me just kind of set, set this for you. So James, the brother of Jesus, um, is supposedly wrote this around 60 AD. Okay, 60 AD, that means the temple would still be standing for all you, you biblical scholars. The temple would still be standing. Now, some say he might have written it around 45, you know, 46 AD. Here's the bottom line. Jesus ascended in 33 AD. We're not very far from that. So this audience James is talking to, he's talking to uh, some of the, the very early church. And these are uh, uh, Jewish, uh, a lot of Jewish people. In fact, he kind of makes that clear as he starts, as he starts the uh, book out about the 12 tribes that are spread. Okay. And so, uh, so this is who James is talking to. Um, and so he's explaining some things to them about the church uh, and, 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 I want to read to you the, the scriptures that we're going to uh, start with, to, that we're going to be in today. And that's found in James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. I'm reading from the NIV, okay? And it says this, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well and the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover a multitude of sins. Now, look, what I just read to you is about two months worth of sermons. But we're going to try to we're going to try to walk through this in about it. it, it, it we're not going to take that long. OK, give us uh, 20, 30 minutes or so and kind of walk through. And then really, it is something that you want to dive into deeper on your own. Or when you get in study groups, you want to dive in. Don't just stop here where we're talking right now. OK, um, this could very easily be a two or three part series. So the book of James, like I said, according to Moses, written around 60 AD, uh, he's writing to a mostly Jewish audience uh, who are very familiar with the Old Testament or the Torah, as, as some would refer to it, and he refers to them as the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. So he's talking to this uh, Jewish population. The, the writer to the book of Hebrews, same thing. He was writing to a Jewish population, uh, a, a Jewish converts. They had converted to Christianity. Okay. Uh, and so it's clear that these people who James is talking to are Christians. So as a leader in the church in Jerusalem, James is writing to encourage these Christians who have more than likely uh, 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 seen a lot in their time. They've seen a lot of persecution. They've seen a lot of trials. They're familiar with Stephen being stoned. They're probably fam familiar with this guy named Saul who went around persecuting Christians in the early church who would later become the Apostle Paul. They probably have this and a lot more under their belts. And one of the reasons why they're scattered around the nation, the nations probably has to do with persecution they have gone through. So when he, so when he writes to them, he knows that, they, that they're going through some trials. They've seen trials. They're going through trials. And so when we look at the book of James, uh, uh, there's a couple things I want us to look at first. One of, one of them is he begins and ends the book that he wrote in the same way. Pray. He begins talking about prayer in James 1 5. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should all, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it would be given him. In other words, pray. He starts out saying prayer. You got some issues, you got some things you don't understand. You, can, you don't know how to apply certain things in your life. Pray. OK, uh, and, and we're going to find out that he ends the book in the same way. And as we see, there is at least one portion of this book that w that will require some wisdom or at least some pondering. There are some things that he's saying, and, and we're talking about some of that even now, some things that, that it's going to require some, okay, what is he really saying to me here? Because it's, it's going to be easy to, to perhaps not get the right message. Uh, this wisdom is not just about understanding, but rather how to apply what we have understood, what we have come to learn. Wisdom also has an application piece to it, and he's talking about that as well. 
Secondly, James is also writing about the power of community, the power of the church family. So he's talking to some people. He's talking to them as individuals, but he's talking to them as a body. And that's something that we need to take on, that there is power in the community. It's not, it's not just us by ourselves. Uh, in today's text, you can see that the power of being part of the church community, community and not going it alone will make a difference. And, and, and different people had different times. People were told, hey, don't go it alone. You know, be, become part of the family, become part of the community. Yes, we, you have this relationship with God. But do you have a relationship with the community? Because the community will make a difference. We'll see that later. And the, the writer of the book of Hebrews, who I told you was also writing to Jews, Hebrews, Jews, get it? Okay. Uh, in Hebrews 10, 25, he said this. He said, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, family, community. Okay. You need to be community. And all the more as you see the day approaching. So, so one of the themes here is, community. We need to be community in what we're doing. And so uh, one of the things that we see here in, in James, he talks about calling the elders to anoint you with oil and pray with you if you're sick. That's community. That's community. That's not long distance. You know, it's, it's very easy for us today, with, you know, to uh, somebody could be in one city, somebody in another. We're holding Bible studies. That's great. I commend that. We need to do that. But what's your community? Where's your community? Where where are you face to face with people? Okay, uh, confessing your sins one to another, uh, not just to reveal what's happening in your life, but rather so that the community can pray for you. That's community, and he talks about that confessing your sins one to another. And you, it's easy to say, well, I confess to God, God hears me, and and I'm good. And 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 what James is saying is, no, that's power in you confessing to one another so that the community can pray for you. Now, I don't personally believe that he's saying that you need to stand up in front of church and tell everybody what you did uh, that was bad. You can do that. I, I, that's, that's probably not my style. But there must be people in the community who you'll go to. And, that's, and he's talking about that. And so confessing our sins one to another. I don't think he's requiring here that you tell everyone, but rather that there are some in the body or the community who you know that you can go to with the issues of life and it's in your stumblings in life. And if any of you have never stumbled before uh, in your Christian walk, well, you can just leave right now. You probably don't need this. Don't. Because maybe you stumbled. You just don't know you did. And you'll be leaving thinking that you never stumbled. Okay. So, uh, after all, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective, is what he says. Why is it, be, is it because they have some mystical connection to results? The righteous have this, this mystical connection that if they pray for you, they can make things all right? No, it's because they have a real connection to God. That's where, that's, where, that's where the results come from. You know, I've said to people before, hear me carefully when I say this, don't get up and walk out. I tell people before, prayer don't work. And they look at me kind of strange. I go, it's who you're praying to who works. It's that connection with God who works. See, there's a lot of people who pray. I mean, there's this, there's different people out there who pray in uh, different religions, different organizations, and pray, 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 and, and talk. Uh, it's who you're talking to. And sometimes we put our faith in, in my ability to say some good words and, and to pray. Uh, that's not what's working. What's working is who I am talking to and the genuineness of heart and, and, the, and the connection I have to God. That's where prayer works. So prayer does work. So don't go, don't you walk out of here today saying, he said prayer don't work. Okay, no, prayer, prayer works, but it's who you're praying to. But so do you think that God hears your prayers? I'm asking you now, do you think that God hears your prayers? If not, why not? Why, what makes you think that? What makes you think God does not hear you? Do you think that perhaps uh, you don't lead the kind of life that God would listen to a person like me? Do you think you're not enough that God would listen to a person like me? I'll, I'll suggest this to you. God hears all of us. He hears us all. Sometimes we don't hear God. Sometimes we don't hear him talking to us. And so we get, we get out of sync. And so, and, and, and so even in our prayers, we no longer even praying to God. We just praying because of something we do. You, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you know the old uh, uh, pray before dinner time thing by your head, you know, Jesus wept. You know, it, it, who were you talking to? You were talking to the folks around the table. And you kept it short on purpose because you know they wanted to eat right now. Okay? Now, I'm not knocking how you say your dinner time prayers. I'm just saying that uh, God hears us. But are we talking to God or are we talking to ourselves? Do we feel hurt? Do we feel worthy? Well, Christ has made us worthy. God hears us, okay? So, yes, I think God hears your prayers. The question is, do you hear his responses in your daily life? Are you connected enough with your church uh, community to know uh, where to continually go for prayer? When you need prayer, do you know where to go? 
Do you have to figure out? Do I have to go to my Rolodex and think, who can I get to pray for me? I wonder will somebody pray for me? Or are you connected enough to know with a certainty there's people in my group, in my church, in my community, I go to them and they're going to pray for me. And so even in verse 20, James speaks to the community aspect of how some in the community can notice that a person who needs to be assisted in being guided back to the truth uh, if or when it appears that they are straying away. Community notices that. So he, because he, he's what he said was, you know, if we if we if we say, stop a person from straying away and help bring them back, he talks about what what has happened. Okay, um, it takes a community to notice that. Yeah, God can see it. Okay, and God can talk to you. But sometimes it takes your brother or your sister to come to you and say, you know, I see this thing. And how can they see it? Because they're community with you. They know it. They see it. They know you. They see what's going on. And in many cases, sometimes all we needed was that person to come to me and act, and. Not just act like they care, but care enough to say to me, to call me out, or to just come be inquisitive about it, okay? So, one of the things to keep in mind when we think about community, so many of you have heard the story. Just act like you haven't. Act like, wow, Keith, that was really cool. Okay, no, you don't have to do that. But uh, here's the story. The lesson of the geese. You know, the geese fly in formation, right? And, and when the geese fly in formation, you know, they all, they're in this V-shape. And why are they in a V-shape? Because the lift from the wings of the first one is helping the, the wings of the second and the third and the fourth. And, the, and, and they're all getting lifts. So, so the first one's getting a bit more tired than those behind. And when the first one gets tired, the first one drops back to the back and another one takes the lead. And they help each other fly like that, okay? We should be helping each other fly. But then also the geese, if one of them goes down, one of them gets ill, something happens, they go down, two more, it said, will go down with them. And they will be with that one that goes down until they, either that one can go back up again or they figure out this, this, you know, this one is not going to make it. And then they'll join another flock that's passing by. The geese understand the community. They understand that I can fly by myself. I got wings. I can fly. But they also understand that with each other, we can fly better. With each other, we can be better. We can do better. So keep, uh, keep in mind the lesson of the geese. Now, I want to now focus on, if I might, that part of the scripture of what James said that many people have a question about. And that's verse 15. And the prayer often in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they would be forgiven. Now, some people would take this and go, oh, well, I'll just go to church and, 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 and find the right people to pray for me, okay? And I don't need aspirin. I don't need Motrin. I don't need a doctor because I'm going to be made well. That's what that verse just told me, that the prayer offering of faith will make the sick person well, okay? And, and then if I get the elders to put a little oil on me and pray for me, it's going to be even better. So I don't need any of that stuff. Is that what James is saying? Is he really saying, how do we interpret this, what he's saying about what's taking place here? Now, some people would be like, if you recall, there's this, this pool in, in the scripture. You, found it, you can read about it in John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. It was a Jew called Beth, Bethesda, Beth, Bethsaida. There's different pronunciations of it. And, and I'll read to you from John 5, 1, 8. And, and uh, uh, this is an encounter with Jesus. It says, sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the sheep gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. I want to go to verse 4, and I want you to know that verse 4 in some Bibles, you may be reading this and you don't see a verse 4, because some manuscripts have it, some don't. Uh, all right, so don't be shocked that you don't see it, okay? So it says, from time to time, an angel of the Lord would come down and stir up the waters. The first one into the pool after each such disturbance would be cured of whatever disease they had. That's verse 4. If you got it, that, that's good. If, if you're reading it. If your Bible doesn't have that, it doesn't change the context of what's being said here. Verse 5 says, One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And we know that, that the man did that. Why did I read that? You see, because some people, when they read what James is saying, that's kind of like that pool at Bethesda. If I just show up, if I just show up, I'll be, I'll be made whole. I'll be, I'll be well. And, and pretty soon you're focusing on getting physically well over a relationship with God. And I don't think James is saying that. I don't think James is saying church is about getting physically well. Sometimes we need to be physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually well. Okay. And I don't think that's what, that, that what James is saying, though, about this, the, sick, the sick getting well. But it's easy to read that into it. And, and why do I not think that James is saying that? 
So one of the reasons I don't believe it is because now James, the brother of Christ, and the apostle Paul were somewhat contemporaries. In fact, Paul talks about it in the book of Galatians, you know, in Galatians he talks about when he, when he met different people in the church. James is one of them he talked about. And at one point, Paul, the apostle Paul called James a pillar of the church. And there's another point at the council of Jerusalem where James was there. James knows this fellow named Paul. Now, why am I bringing that up? I'm bringing that up because uh, this same Paul who would have the same faith that James is talking about says at one point, I asked God three times to heal me. Now, if, what, if we interpret what James is saying is that the prayer made in faith, you're going to automatically be healed. If we interpret that, then Paul should have been healed. But what Paul got was, no, my grace is sufficient for you. You see, we have to include purpose, God's purpose. When we're praying, what, what is God's answer? It's, it's, it's his purpose is, is what's going to count the most. We're to keep praying. We're to be persistent in prayer. We're, just, we're, not, to, we're not to quit praying. Uh, but understand, at least from my understanding, James is not saying to us that if you, it, it, the prayer, when he says, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the prayer in faith will heal the sick. I don't think he's given us a remedy that you just go to church or you go through the, Bethesda, the pool at Bethesda and just jump in and you'll be, you'll be healed. That's not what he's saying. I think this faith he's talking about, this faith is the faithful people who pray in faith because they have a life of faith. They, they, it's not just, it's not momentary faith, just faith, you know, long enough to, to say a prayer or to get prayed over. I don't think that's what he's talking about. In fact, we might not even call that faith. That's a different study at a different time. But the, the point is, he's talking, I believe he's talking about a life of faith. And I don't think he's telling people that 100% you're going to be, you're, you're going to get healed if, 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 if someone prays over you uh, in faith. And, and, and that's important because as we're reading this, it's so easy. And, I, and I've heard it over the years, people who look at this and go, well, that means that means you don't have enough faith if you didn't get healed. You, 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 you didn't have enough faith. You, 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 the people praying for you didn't have enough faith. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that God has purpose. Yeah, that's what it means. OK, now, do I believe that God is in the healing business? Absolutely. One hundred percent. I do. I believe it because the scripture tells us. But I believe it. Some of you know this couple named Jim and Karen McJunkin, okay? And they have a they have a a, 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 a healing prayer ministry. And I have seen some things that, that they've done, some prayer they've done. I've seen people who have had the miraculous recovery, okay? Has it been everybody? No, it, because it's not Jim and Karen that make that makes it happen. It's there. It's them talking to God. It's God who answers the prayer. OK, so do I believe that, that, that God is in the healing business? Absolutely, I do. But I think as we read the scripture, we don't want to get caught up in in uh, in thinking. So all it takes is bam and I'm and I'm cured. No, that's not that's not necessarily so, but it could be. And we, we've seen it. We, we, we know many people who can stand up probably among you right now can stand up and give a testimony of what God did when I prayed. OK, or when people prayed for me. Uh, our prayer then is our faith is not expressed only in our prayer or should not be, but in our daily walk as well. So, yes, God is into the healing business the, the, today, the physical, the emotional and the spiritual. So I'm going to go back and I want to read to you the scripture we started out with in, in closing. OK, I want to read this to you again now that we've had a little chat about it. OK, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and to anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. He's given an example to these Jewish people who know very well this story of Elijah. They know it very well. They know what he's talking about so they can relate that a, a human prayed to God for something to happen. See, because it's easy for people to think, well, Elijah was different. No, no, no. James points out a human, just like you, just like me, a human prayed to God. It happened. OK, again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. 
my final thought, which is, you know, getting an understanding of what James is talking about as he talks to folks about prayer. One of the biggest things he's talking about, he's talking about faith. He's talking about prayer. He's talking about dependency on God. He's also talking about community. Make sure that you are a community. Make sure that you're not just coming to community when there's a need going on, when I need a prayer, whatever. Be community. The Hebrew writer said, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together uh, so we may spur one another on. I may not need anything personally, but I'm coming together so I can spur somebody else on. So remember this, be community. And as a community, faithfully and in faith, take all things to God. Thank you. Oh
Heavenly place undefeated 